Hi, this is Greg from Inside Machines Laboratory and in this video I would like to show you a time-lapse slider that we've recently created. There are quite a lot of such devices on the market right now and that's why we decided to call our sliders the YAMTS, which stands for yet another motorized time-lapse slider. A motorized slider is a rather simple device but it makes it possible to shoot videos like this. Basically, a motorized time-lapse slider is just a rail with a small trolley on top of it and an electric motor. The motor moves the trolley along the rail. In our case, the trolley is pulled with a timing belt, but other designs use strings or threaded rods. We've mounted a ball head with a quick release plate on top of the trolley, and this allows us to attach and position a camera with ease. In this case, we have a Panasonic G9. Setting up the slider is quite straightforward. Simply press the power button and the slider activates a Wi-Fi access point that you can connect to with your smartphone. We've created a simple Android application for setting the time-lapse. The device can work in two modes, step mode and continuous mode. In the latter, the slider simply moves the camera slowly along the rail. This mode can be used when shooting regular videos that require some slowed panning but is not all that useful for shooting time-lapses. The most important mode is the step mode. In this mode, the slider moves the camera in steps. After every short move along the rail, the camera takes a photo and then moves again, and the cycle repeats. To set up the slider in this mode, we need to specify the total number of frames to shoot, in this case, let's say 150. The interval between the frames, or in other words, the duration of each step, let's say five seconds, and the trigger press time, which comes in handy when doing long exposures. We won't need it in this demonstration, so we could leave this value at zero. The total duration of the capture process is displayed at the bottom. This is the amount of time that we will have to wait for the slider to take all the shots. Now just press the start button and the slider starts its work. In the current version of the slider, the trolley always moves from one end of the rail all the way to the other end, so every capture process starts with the trolley moving to the first end. The trolley has small magnets at the bottom, while the ends of the rail are fitted with reed switches. When a magnet on the trolley is close to the read switch, its magnetic field closes the switch. This in turn is detected by the software that controls the slider, and the trolley is slowed down to a full stop. From now on, the slider repeats the move-shoot cycle until the trolley reaches the other end of the rail. Stopping the camera before capturing each frame makes it possible to use long exposure times. This can be useful in low-light conditions or when you wish to remove fast-moving objects from the shot. A strong ND filter can then be applied to lengthen the exposure time. When the trolley with the camera reaches the end of the rail, the slider stops its motion and then moves it swiftly to the middle of the rail. This isn't really necessary, but makes it obvious that the capture process is complete. The slider can be oriented in a number of ways, not only horizontally, but also at an angle. Such an orientation adds some vertical movement to the time-lapse and can be useful for making revealing shots. And that's it. I hope you found our little contraption interesting or maybe even inspiring. In the description below, you will find a link to our post on Hackaday IO, in which we describe in more detail how we've built the slider. You will also find a link to the GitHub repository with the source code for both the device and the Android app. All licenses open source software. Thanks for watching.